I have a deck for you today. I'm going to be playing 50-50 Tempo is what I refer to this deck as. This is a deck built around Marowak and Diglett. Those are the only two, or I said Marowak and Dugdrio, I should say. Uh, those are really the only two cards or only two Pokemon in our deck. Uh, the rest of our deck is just trainers, and it's all about winning some coin flips. You'd be surprised just how often this deck can get ahead and beat every deck in the game. Obviously, there's randomness involved with this deck, so it won't hit every single time, but the sheer upside of both uh, Marowak and Dugdrio's uh, randomness can be absolutely devastating. Dugdrio being able to live an entire turn after his coin flip is fantastic. Almost 100% of the time, obviously, there's things the opponent can do to respond with something like Sabrina, but Dugdrio in a vacuum is just living when he hits his coin flip, which is nice. Uh, Marowak EX is killing basically everything in the game with the exception of Stage 2 EX Pokemon, but this deck shouldn't have to worry about Stage 2 EX Pokemon very often because this deck is trying to close out the game very quickly. I think we should just jump into some games and you'll get a pretty quick idea of how powerful this deck can be. Any yapping I do about it uh, won't do it justice. So let's get into a match and see how things go. One thing you want to keep in mind with this deck is you ideally want to... You want to force the opponent to have to either kill two Marowaks or get them to kill two Dugdrios before they have to fight the Marowak. Um, that way, they're you're maximizing the amount of prize uh, points that they have to get to win the game. Oh, nice. We found the uh, Diglett. We, we love leading with Diglett in this deck. It's a little bit unfortunate that we're going first here. We would much prefer to be going second with this deck because, generally speaking, this is a more aggressive-oriented deck. Uh, let's go with the Professor's Oak here to draw two. One, two. Oh man, we didn't find any more Pokemon. That's a little bit disappointing. We would have liked to have seen more Pokemon here. Fine, we can go ahead and pass. Hopefully we find our Dugdrio or our Marowak next turn. We're already eight cards deep into the deck. So hopefully, hopefully. There's the Oak for the draw two. Our opponent is also now eight cards deep. 11 cards deep now. Oh, sorry, uh, nine cards deep. He does find the Moltres, which is not good news for us. I assume he has the Arcanine EX, but probably won't play it this turn. Oh my god, our opponent's kind of set up, actually. Very deep into his deck. He has the X speed as well to get out, and now he can set up the Moltres. Yeah, our opponent hit everything he wants, so we're going to need some fortunate draws here to keep up with this. It is possible, though. We could go, like, Oak into... Dugdrio into Cubone, something like that. Also, he could land nothing but tails here, and that'd be good for us. Oh my god, he's got two whole free fire energy. Goes on to the Charmeleon, which tells me he probably has the whole Charizard line in hand. It'd be weird to commit this if he didn't. So I think this is probably a good opportunity to red card. We can Pokeball, looking for our... Um, our... Uh, we want Cubone here would be the ideal draw, I think. Okay, Diglett. So, we'll jam the Diglett. That's fine. Really want to find the Drio, though. We'll hit them with the Mud Slap and move on. Did find the Charmeleon even after the red card. Okay, red card's us. Honestly, that's, that's not the worst thing in the world. We do kind of need a mulligan right now. We need to find our Cubones, we need to find our Marowaks, and we need to find our Dugdrios, which are currently eluding us right now. D we kind of really, really need to draw Dugdrio this turn. Cubone is also acceptable, but... Oh my god. Oh my... Oh my god! Okay. Cubone, it is. Guaranteed to be a Cubone off of this Pokeball. There's the Cubone. Cubone, Cubone. We jam the Cubone. We attach a turn on the Cubone. And hit him with a Mud Slap. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to kill Moltres or Charizard without using the Marowak. Because if we push Marowak to kill Moltres, he's just going to push the Charizard. And then we lose to that. Because if our Marowak dies, we're in a really bad spot. Unless we can find our second Marowak, then maybe there's hope. But I don't think that should be our expected outcome. This has been a pretty unfortunate draw for us while our opponent 
has... Oh, he didn't, um... He didn't evolve. I'm gonna push the Q-Bar in here and just kind of hope he doesn't have the Charizard. Eight cards left in deck, so the odds of him having it are pretty high. But I think I have to take this risk because we haven't found the second Marowak. And we didn't find Dugdrio. So... It's a Bonerang time, and we need some high rolls. Alright, one. Two, fantastic. Down goes Moltres. Alright, if he doesn't have Charizard here, we can absolutely win this game. We can absolutely win this game if he doesn't have the Charizard. And he didn't play it last turn, so it's not one of those three cards in his hand. So, it comes down to whether or not he top decks Charizard with this draw. Does he do it? He hits the Sabrina. Okay. Well, that's good news for me. It probably means he's not... He's not killing us this turn. <laughs> Attaches return on Charmeleon. Yeah, he doesn't have the Charizard. Fantastic news for us. Now it comes down to a single coin flip. You're probably looking at the board right now and thinking, well, no, you have to hit two Charmeleon coin flips here. Oh, sorry, two coin flips to kill Charmeleon here. But we have the Sabrinas in hand, so we can force out the Growlithe. So then it's just going to come down to the one coin flip. Sabrina! Give me that Growlithe. Bring me the dog. You can attach the fighting energy for BM. And we just need the one coin flip here. Don't let us down. There it is! Marowak closing out the game. Holy, I love this deck. Uh, now, obviously, that didn't go ideally for our opponents. They didn't hit their Charizard. But it definitely didn't go ideally for us. So, you know, all's fair uh, when it doesn't go great either player. Um, the red card, I think, probably helped us. I think he had the whole Charizard line. The reason I think he had the whole Charizard line is he committed energy to Charmander despite having the Stage 1 uh, card in play, Growlithe, which goes to Arcanine. Usually you would want to invest in the Stage 1 card because you're more likely to find the evolution. But um, he, he immediately started investing into Charmeleon. Oh, sorry, into at the time it was Charmander. Um, so I thought it would be a good time to red card because I had an inclination that he had the Charizard in hand. And yeah, he never ended up finding the Charizard after the red card. So that was fantastic for us. Oh, we're going second. This should be a good showcase game then because um, ooh, it would have been better for us to have found... Um, Diglett, but we'll, we'll lead with Cubone instead. Cubone can also be a good starter, especially if we find a second Cubone. But generally speaking, uh, Diglett is going to be a little bit better for us. Let's see, what are we up against? Places two Pokemon, a Golet and a Mewtwo. Okay, so he's definitely got the God of War Lion in his deck. The Golet is an interesting piece of, of tech. The evolved version of Golet deals up to 200 damage, which is kind of crazy. Ooh, we found the Diglett. If we find an X speed, we might even just rotate the Diglett in, uh, depending on what else we find. So let's quickly Pokeball. Do we find the second Cubone or the second Diglett? We found the second Cubone. Okay. Let's see where Professor's research gets us. We found the X speed and the second Diglett. Hmm. No Marowak yet. I think we're meant to X speed up one of these Diglets. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to attach for turn on one of the Diglets and then X speed up the, uh, or X speed the Cubone out of here, pushing the Diglet up and start dealing damage now while the opponent doesn't have an attack available. He's probably going to start investing energy into the Mewtwo, uh, which is absolutely fine because we want him to push the Mewtwo to kill off the Diglet. By then we'll have a Marowak set up and we can go for the double coin flip uh, to KO a Mewtwo, um, which is fantastic waiting for the opponent now let's see do they have the start of the god of wild lion do they find the rolts they're probably really wanting rolts right now and the evolution on golet would be nice because it's kind of like healing oh he invests the energy on golet whoa that is pretty greedy again push a fighting energy on cubone i don't want to show the marowak yet actually you know what i will i will show the marowak just because I'm a little bit afraid of red card and we so desperately need Marowak here. So we'll push the Mud Slap. Next turn, I'm probably going to retreat, attach for turn on Marowak, Sabrina out the Mewtwo and go for the coin flip while the Mewtwo doesn't have any energy to threaten us with. Clefable. Oh, Clefairy, sorry. Clefable is the evolution, of course. Golrook. 
That Clefairy is actually protecting him from Sabrina here. Honestly, I'm still down to go for the Sabrina. Actually, it's not that deep. I think we just retreat and push with Marowak. No Sabrina needed. And Marowak is hopefully going to deal some damage here. Let's go ahead and press his research. Look for some other cards. We found a potion and a red card. I don't feel the need to red card right now. I don't think he has the Rolts line in his deck, so... Just going to do some coin flipping. One. One. One will do. One will do. There's some damage. We could even rotate out Marowak if we wanted to secure the kill on, on Golrook. We could, um, we could retreat, push the Diglett, deal 20, secure the kill. I don't know if we will do that yet or not, but it's an option available to us. He's now got the Clefairy set up, or the Clefable set up for 40 damage. Thankfully, 40 is just in range, not one-shotting our Diglets. We need to make sure this Mewtwo doesn't get the four energy, and then... Oh yeah, I like this. I like this. So we're going to push the Dugdrio. Attach for turn on Dugdrio. Use Marowak's one-cost retreat, which is actually so clutch in this deck, to push out the Dugdrio. Now we can use Dig, and on a 50% chance here, we can't take any damage from Mewtwo or uh, Clefable. Now we can't take any damage. Absolutely fantastic. We pick up the kill. The opponent can't apply any pressure to our Dogdrio, which is fantastic. He could Sabrina us, which is, uh, which isn't ideal, but he could do that. Uh, we can... Okay. That, I was going to say reactively, whether he pushes Mewtwo or Clefable there, we can try to follow up with Marowak, but um, in this case, we're probably just going to stick with the Dogdrio and try and get Dogdrio to kill off Clefable on, on his own. Unless we find the second Marowak, uh, in which case I'm down to push Marowak and, and see what we can make happen. So the opponent Pokeball's there and doesn't play the Pokemon. It's interesting to note. Okay, we have a Pokeball. We're just going to play this to thin our deck in the case of Red Card. Uh, I am going to Red Card opponent because they played Pokeball and didn't play the Pokemon. So I think more often than not, this is making the opponent's hand worse. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, we're going to attach Bonerang and uh, I will go for the retreat play here mm, actually it's kind of risky I'm gonna Sabrina I'm gonna Sabrina to force the Mewtwo out and then go for the dig trying to lower Mewtwo's health here a little bit because if Dugdrio can attack twice, Marowak only needs to land the one coin flip. Okay, nice. Dugdrio is protected, so he won't be taking damage from this Mewtwo. Which means Dugdrio will be able to attack twice, which means Marowak will only have to land the one coin flip to beat Mewtwo. Pokeballs again. Will he play the Pokemon this time? He does. He plays a Swoobat. Okay, interesting. Or a Woobat. This is Woobat. Swoobat is the evolution. Trying to remember all my Pokemon names. It's been a very long time. He attaches on the Woobats. Which seems a bit odd. I feel like you should attach on the Clefable. But... Alright, we go for the evolution on Dugdrio. We can attach for turn on... You know what? I'll attach for turn on the Cubone. Actually, yeah. I'll attach for turn on the Cubone. Uh, and then we'll go for another dig. Ideally, we hit the coin flip here, but it doesn't really matter. We're just setting this up so that Marowak only has to land one coin flip. Okay, nice. That's fine. He'll now attach for the uh, Psychic, or Side Drive, I should say, to try and kill off Dugdrio. If he kills off Dugdrio, we can push the Marowak, which only needs the one coin flip, to kill off Mewtwo and then secure us the game. He's Professor Researching to draw two, leaving just six cards in the deck, so we should assume that he has access to anything he wants at this point. We only have four cards left in our deck, but yeah, we still haven't found our second Marowak. What's up with that? I'm really curious to see what he does here. He's in kind of an awkward position. Oh, he's going to X speed out. Really? He's going to X speed out. He's worried about pushing the kill on Dugtrio because then obviously I can, I can, uh, I only need the one coin flip to win the game. That's probably why he's trying to get out a basic Pokemon instead of an EX Pokemon. I'm oh, sorry, a standard Pokemon instead of an EX Pokemon. Yeah, so that's what he does. Does he have the Giovanni or something? No Giovanni, just feeling the, the damage. 
wild. Oh, there's my Giovanni. You know what? I'm down. I'm so likely to find... I'm so likely to find the... the second Marowak that I'm kind of down to just do this. I'm going to retreat here, push Marowak, and uh, I'm going to go for the Giovanni here. He doesn't have the energy required to one-shot Marowak next turn, which is kind of a big deal. And then Bonarang here, we only need the one coin flip to kill off this Swoobat, so surely we land it. Nice, we got it. Shout out to Giovanni for making the difference there. Down goes the Swoobat, and now he has to push. No matter what he pushes here, it's something that if Marowak kills it, we win the game. So he's probably going to just push Mewtwo because he needs to push... Uh, something that's actually a threat. <laughs> um, and he kind of just has to hope that I don't land my successful coin flips now. Because he's got himself in such a game state that his Mewtwo is too weak. Which can't feel good. Goes for the research. That's every card in his deck, right? Nope. No, I was thinking of my deck that only had three cards. His, his deck had five, apparently. Well, six it would have been. So, three cards left in his deck. He should, again, have access to anything he wants. He's, so I was right, he's not running the Rolt's line. That Psychic Spear is not quite enough. And now, oh my god, and we found the other Marowak that we were talking about. And now Marowak just needs to land the one coin flip and we're going to have two chances at it as well. Our odds are looking extremely good here. Let's go, Bonarang. Ship it. Just the one coin flip is all we need, and that's enough to close out the game. Holy, I love this Marowak deck. It is so fun. Got him. Alrighty, we've got Diglett leading the game, which is fantastic news. Are we going first or second? Oh my god, we're going second? This is actually a great start to the game. We love to see it. Oh my god, and we're versing the Lightning deck. This is actually a really good... This deck counters the Lightning deck pretty good. So if you're running into issues against either single prize lightning or uh, Pikachu EX aggro, uh, this deck actually might be a really good response to it. And it's a relatively cheap deck to get as well. Pokeball. Okay, okay. Pokeball. He's Pokeballing. He played two Pokeballs there, so he's going to have a pretty good start to this game. And he had the... Oh, wow. This guy, this guy had all of the, the good trainers in opening hand. Finds the Pikachu EX, of course. So it looks like he's running a mix between single prize. Oh my god, we got red carded. Oh my god, that is not good news. Oh wait, maybe it's fine. <laughs> if we draw a double Pokeball, maybe it's fine. If we find a Professor's Oak, that's also pretty good. Oh my god, we found the Marowak. Wait, we're actually... Maybe we're actually fine. Maybe we're actually fine. We found the Diglett. Dig, 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 dig. Go for the Diglett, and then push the Pokeball to find the... Humone. And we're just going to attach for turn on Diglett. He's dealing 40 damage with each attack against these Pikachu, so we kind of have to just commit to the Diglett. And at some point, Cubone's going to get to roll against Pikachu EX. And that's going to be what decides the game or not. There is the basic Pikachu. Finds the Magneton. He's going to juice up his energy. This is actually kind of a really good start to the game for our opponent. Oh my god, and he has the Oak? Oh my god, our opponent found everything. This is... It, the game is working out perfectly for the opponent. If he could script every game, this is how he would want to go. Uh, so this will be a good litmus test for our deck. Let's see if we can keep up with it. He's probably got a Lieutenant Surge in hand with all that drawing he's done. There's only seven cards left in his deck, right? So the odds are any one specific card he has in his deck is in his hand uh, or has been played. There is the uh, lightning attachment on Pikachu EX. He's definitely planning to push that card. We can attach for turn on Cubone. And he's already played the one red card. Do we think he runs two red card? Yeah, I'm just going to play Marowak just in case he runs the two red cards. And we can go ahead and mud slap away this Pikachu. And he probably pushes Pikachu EX here. Because he's going to want to kill off Diglett. Yep. I don't even know if this is the correct decision from an opponent's perspective. But it's uh, it's too good to pass up. I think they were always going to take that, that opportunity. There's the Zapdos EX. And if we land two coin flips, we're just going to win the game right here. 
it's going to come down to two coin flips. And even if we whiff the two coin flips, Z uh, Pikachu EX can't kill Marowak with one hit. So even if we only land one coin flip, or even if we land zero, there's a chance that we're not out of the game. So I'm feeling pretty good about pushing this Marowak. He might have Giovanni, which is why he's comfortable taking this, which means our Diglett being on the board is not good news. Um, oh, sorry, I said Giovanni, but I meant Sabrina. So we lo if we don't land these two coin flips, we lose to Sabrina, which he likely has. I'm gonna just red card because he might be making this Lion just because he has the Sabrina in hand already. And I'd rather decrease the odds of him having the Sabrina, um, which we do kind of do that uh, by playing red card. And then uh, we can hit the Bonerang and surely we land uh, two heads here and we just close out the game, right? Nope. Okay, one. So like I said, we do lose to Sabrina, which hopefully we don't do. He can also just retreat the Pikachu EX now that it's at 20 health. Oh, we also don't lose to Sabrina. How silly of me. I've been playing around Sabrina super hard, but... Oh, well, since thinking of it. <laughs> but Sabrina actually doesn't even beat us here. Well, he has the Lieutenant Surge. That beats us. Oh, man. Okay. Well, we couldn't beat the Lieutenant Surge either. It's similar to what I thought we were in a situation to for Sabrina. Um, but it's, it's the same situation, just in reverse. Unfortunately, the red card, even after the red card, he found those cards. His deck was just so thin after having played uh, double Pokeball, double Professor Oak. So, yeah, not much we could do about that. Like I said, the opponent hit everything. But even when the opponent hit everything, we were just one coin flip away from beating them. Like, we should... Most decks aren't going to beat this Pikachu player in this case because they're an aggro deck that got the exact start that they wanted. And uh, most people would have just been too far out of the game. But Marowak on his own well, it was almost enough to to clutch up but he just didn't quite get there so it's cool to see that this deck is still always in the game you know all right we're going first we can jam diglett we've already got the pokeball in hand to help us find the cubone for marowak which is fantastic he has the moltres set up not good for us although he only has a growlith growlith is less scary than say something like a charmander or a Center Scorch or something like that. Oh my god, we found the double Pokeball. So now we just have all of our basic Pokemon out of our deck, which is great. Thinning our deck for us, meaning we are already eight cards deep. And that means there are high quality cards left in our deck. We can go ahead and play Cubone and play the second Cubone here. We're looking for Doug Drios. We're looking for Professor Oaks. We're looking for Marowax. We're looking for X Speeds. Actually, as well, X Speed's really good here. The reason X Speed is so good is because if we find X Speed, we're just two turns away from setting up a Marowak who can try and one shot this Moltres, uh, which might be our primary win con here. He goes for the Inferno Dance. We're looking for low numbers off of these coin flips. Expected value is 1.5. What is the actual outcome? Come on, flip that coin. I wish, I, I, sometimes I wish these coin flips were automatic. Some, like, some people take a long time to flip their coins, you know? He hits all three! Holy, okay. So, just like last game, this might be a good litmus test in this matchup to see how we perform despite the opponent hitting what they their ideal situation, right? So, we can go ahead and Marowak evolve here uh, and attach for turn on Marowak. We're really hoping to draw this... Um, we're dr hoping to draw this X speed. I don't think it was worth pushing the Mud Slap on Diglett. The math doesn't really fix itself unless we find Dugdrio. And I think we're better off going for this line and just hoping we find uh, X speed instead. And even if we don't find X speed, we can still do the same thing. It's just delayed by a turn. He goes for the Inferno Dance again. Surely he doesn't land three again. Again, expected value of 1.5. What does he get? It's the one. Okay, it's the two. This person is well above their expected value right now. Draw. We find the X speed, which is absolutely huge. Yeah, it's absolutely huge because even Arcanine EX doesn't kill our Marowak. So we can go ahead and set up our Marowak. We can X speed Diglett out of here and start doing some coin flipping to try and close out this game nice and quickly. There is our Marowak. And he's going to swing with Bonerang. Surely he will not whiff. He will provide. And he does just that, KOing the Moltres. But, like I said, the opponent's already gotten five energy out of that Moltres. 
So the game's certainly not over yet. I will say we're feeling pretty good to my memory. Arcanine EX only does 120 damage. So Marowak is surviving the hit, which is fantastic news for us. He pushes the Moltres uh, over the Growlithe, which tells me he does not have the Arcanine EX in hand. If he does have, if he does draw the Arcanine EX though, he can always, um, he can always retreat this Moltres out. He's gonna swing, oh, he goes for the Sabrina. Um, we'll push Diglett. We won't want two Dugdrios this game, but we could want two Marowaks. Doo, doo, doo. Man, I love the music in this game. So he'll kill off Diglett here. I wonder if he has the second Sabrina and he's just trying to cheese out the game with Sabrina. But it doesn't really do much still. He's still he'll have to kill this Marowak at some point. He can't run three copies of Sabrina. Ooh, speaking of Sabrina. What are you weak to? Are you weak to fighting? Oh, if Rapidash was weak to fighting, we could have Sabrina'd here and guaranteed it a win with just one coin flip. We can go ahead. I say guarantee, but obviously that's not a guarantee. We'll attach the energy on Cubone here and swing with Bonerang again. We hit the one. And we hit the two. What a beautiful game. What a beautiful example of what po uh, Cubone, <laughs> of what Marowak can do. Uh, even when the opponent hit everything they wanted, they weren't quite fast enough compared to our two cost attack that sometimes just deals 160 damage. So you can see the ebbs and flows of this deck in this video, but you can also see the ceiling and the potential that the deck has, uh, meaning that I think the deck will always be kind of relevant, or at the very least Marowak will always be relevant because that's so much damage and yes, it's tied to randomness, but the fact that it can just run away with a game like that, even when the game was going so good for the opponent, kind of speaks to how powerful it can be. It's all about managing that randomness though and, and recognizing when to leverage your best opportunity uh, and when you're forced to kind of take a risk versus when you um, maybe don't need to take that risk. Anyway, uh, that's been it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and I'll catch you in the next one.